Maple Grove hopes to make Gleason Fields a signature destination for baseball and softball tournaments. The project has been delayed before due to increased construction costs, but now the project is set to begin. But all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. yippee yay yo kai -yay. Last week, the Maple Grove Park and Recreation Board voted unanimously to approve a redesign of the Gleason Fields Athletic Complex at a cost of $14.9 million. The design calls for building four ball fields with artificial turf, adding LED lighting, a new concession stand, and more. This is a scaled back version of the design the city approved last year when the bids came in more than $4 million over budget. I think people, uh, um, the impression is that this is a very expensive project, and it is. It's a, it's a significant investment for the board, but we have made significant investments in our uh, athletic fields and complexes, and a good example of that is Fernbrook Fields. City officials say construction will begin this spring with the field opening in the spring of 2023. In Crystal, there is a new apartment complex proposed, Sand Companies. A St. Cloud area developer wants to build 58 units on vacant land on West Broadway near Big Louie's Bar and Grill. The proposal includes units ranging from one to four bedroom units. An open house in the project is scheduled for the evening of March 3rd at Crystal City Hall. Well, have you given up on your New Year's resolution yet? If you are thinking about a reset on healthy eating, consider checking with a dietitian. Hello everybody, I'm Shannon Slatt and I'm at the Plymouth High V to talk about some meal prep options and nutritional information that you might not know. Joining me is registered dietitian Melissa Yeager. Melissa, thanks for being here. Thanks for coming out to Plymouth today. Absolutely. One thing that was new to me is the new meal prep options that you have at High V and they're pretty cool. Tell us about those. Yes, so we have freezer meal prep workshops that we host on a monthly basis with a rotating menu. And so in under 60 minutes, you can prep five freezer ready meals to feed you and your family. So it's a great way to save some time and answer that what's for dinner tonight question by having food all ready to go that dietitians will walk you through step by step. And you can ask those dietitians questions along the way too, which is really helpful. Exactly. We're there to talk through why are we choosing these products? Maybe here's a simple substitution to help cut the sodium. Or if you're looking for allergen friendly items, we can easily walk you through substitutions available to make that convenient for you and your family. We're here in the frozen food section and you say, even though we, we know there's frozen pizza here, there's some healthy options too. Exactly. I think we get stuck in that idea of shop only the perimeter of the store and there are great items that can still help you build a balanced plate available in our frozen department, in our center aisles. Sometimes it's just a matter of picking them up, looking at the label a little bit and figuring out what's going to still create that convenient meal option while still giving you a nutrient dense meal to build from. All right. Any tips as far as what we should look for on a label? What should stand out to us? Yeah, I always like to pick it up and I'm always going, is there fiber and protein in the product? And are we looking to limit maybe sodium, saturated fat, and added sugars because we know that there are some nutrients of concern that we want to limit or avoid. So oftentimes it's finding that balance. You can grab no salt added canned vegetables. You can grab frozen fruits and vegetables that are picked at their peak ripeness and flash frozen to preserve nutrients and easily get more fruits and vegetables on your table or in your child's lunchbox. I feel like canned goods are one of those items that people have kind of put, put on the back burner. It's not that healthy for you, but you say there's some good options there. There are some great options and always looking for things like no salt added canned vegetables or unsweetened canned fruit. Things that are packaged in 100% fruit juice or an unsweetened applesauce. All are a great way to still get fiber, vitamins and minerals packed into your meal on the go. Now, if folks want to learn more or they want to tap into some of the services that you guys offer beyond the grocery store, what do they need to do? All they need to do is head to hyvee.com backslash health and they can look up their local hy dietitian by searching their zip code and reach out to us either over the phone via email or stop by and say hi next time you're shopping in the store. All right sounds like a good idea. Melissa Yeager registered dietitian with hy thank you for being here. We'll post more information about the services that we talked about today on our website. You can go there at ccxmedia.org. The Maranatha Christian Academy Robotics team won the state championship and will be one of three teams from Minnesota competing at the world championships in April. Reporter Jason Melillo shows us how they are preparing for what's next. The Maranatha Christian Academy Robotics team is becoming a perennial power. Being one of those three teams that advanced out of Minnesota is a huge deal. They are known as Chain Reaction 
and the team recently won the state championship. It was a situation where uh, things didn't start out the greatest. They had some more challenges they needed to overcome. It's the third time a team from MCA has earned that honor. When you have a vision for what you can accomplish and what you see other people doing, you have that vision, you have that path kind of laid out before you and you know what the expectations are and you know what it's going to take to get there. The competitive robotics program at Maranatha started eight years ago. Unlike a typical athletic team, I don't give them the plays. And is almost entirely student run. They have to come up with a design, the robot built. Being successful takes collaboration. I think it's really admirable, especially to see my other teammates kind of trying new things, learning new, um, really complex kind of functions is really interesting because they never stop trying to learn. The students build the robot from scratch over several months. Certainly they're learning engineering skills, they're learning uh, CAD skills, they're learning how to how to program in Java, they're, right, they're doing a lot of the technical skills. Solving problems. Honestly it's fun, like you try something, doesn't work, you keep going. And working through a myriad of issues along the way. We would build something or we would program something and it just wouldn't work and we would spend countless hours trying to figure out why it wouldn't work or what, what we did wrong. But the technical learning, those life skills, those soft skills, those are things that you kind of have to experience. Is just part of the benefit. Puts it into perspective of like real life. They just keep going, keep trying to learn, keep growing. Jason Malillo, CCX News. Minnesota has become a hotbed for Division I basketball prospects in the past decade or so. In this week's CCX Sports Spotlight, John Jacobson introduces us to one of those players from the class of 2022. Damarian Watson said he was first recruited to play college basketball his freshman year of high school. He's a top 1% athlete, and then he knew he had to get serious about his sport. It takes a lot to win, and um, winning takes hard work. Maple Grove native learned a lot his freshman and sophomore years at Minnehaha Academy from older teammates and five-star recruits, Jalen Suggs and Chet Holmgren. They work extremely hard. They're always the hardest working on the team. Um, during practice, they're the most intense guys. After two years of varsity basketball at Minnehaha, Watson came to Tutino Grace last season. He's worked like crazy, you know, he's probably put on 15 to 20 pounds over the course of the last 18 months. Six foot seven inch wing is one of five players scoring in double figures per game for a talented and deep Eagles team. I think anybody in our starting lineup could probably be averaging five to 10 extra points as an individual somewhere else. But, um, you know, he gets along with his teammates great. He's a really selfless kid. I think across, the, sometimes too selfless. You know, I think across the board, we, we want these guys to, you know, pursue matchups that favor them. but. Um, he's worked really well with his teammates considering the talent we have. The way that Coach Carroll coaches, he coaches everybody the same, he coaches everybody hard, um, he makes us really work and kind of just gets us better overall and um, he knows what the right stuff to do. Next season, Damarian will take his basketball talents to Iowa State University and of course the Big 12 Conference, which includes perennial national power Kansas and defending national champion Baylor among others. Obviously I'm going to have to put a lot of hard work in, but it's kind of with this Really, really nice and cool that I could be able to um, play at the different arenas and uh, Baylor, Kansas, kind of play against those guys, compete. And so I think it's going to be really nice. And he's done a great job, you know, really hitting the skill stuff hard. Uh, I think at his best, you know, in the open floor, playing above the rim in transition, those are the things that came naturally to him. But um, he's really added a lot of substance, you know, just defending, comprehending. Uh, scouting reports and opponents, and also, you know, obviously his ability to shoot, you know, make him pretty unique at the college level. Yeah, six threes in the game. The way that uh, they play at Iowa State, kind of positional basketball, everybody just kind of moves around. They do like a, almost a five out, one in, or kind of like a five out set. So, I mean, everybody kind of plays the same position except the point guard. The Eagles were recently humbled in a loss to Park Center. Understanding that winning is hard and winning takes a lot of heart, and winning's not going to be easy just because we have a lot of talent. We know their game collectively needs to improve in order for Tuccino Grace to make a strong postseason run. We'll be good, and with um, a lot of this upcoming pre uh, preparation that we're going to have, it's going to build a lot of our character. Watson scored 30 points in the Eagles' latest win over Elk River. Grace is now 18 and 6. 
Totino Gray split two meetings with Park Center, the top-ranked team in Class 4A. The Pirates met up with a district rival Thursday night in what turned into a pretty good game. In boys basketball, top-ranked Park Center pays a visit to a Maple Grove team that knocked off number two Shakopee a week ago. Park Center dominates early. James Spencer knocks down a three as the Pirates get off to a 7-0 lead to start. But it's not an easy night. Maple Grove battles back. Ashton Kiyomse with the pass fake and three to tie the score at 19-19. He has a great first half with nine points. John Hawkinson drives to score as part of a key run for the Crimson. They lead by as much as eight and are still up three at halftime. But Park Center is tough to contain. The nice interchange here and Braden Carrington pops a three from the corner and the Pirates lead 43-37. Then a high screen frees Carrington from the top of the key. He scores 17 in the second half and 23 for the night for Park Center. Maple Grove stays in it, but Leo Torbor's dunk helps put an exclamation point on a 70-57 win for Park Center as they improve to 23-1 with one week left in the regular season. Both teams now enter the final week of the regular season. That's all for sports. Thanks for watching.